Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith. We are here for Chemist Warehouse. Heading to Chemist Warehouse for great savings every day. Panthers v. The Storm, 750 at Core Stadium. Panthers team news. Jerome Luai and Tungo reportedly return. So Luai has been named, but it's still it's still up in the air as to whether he'll definitely play. Tungo has been named to play as well. Cogger and Garner move back to the bench. So they're running with Cogger on the bench, which I find really interesting. Storm team news. Hughes is set to return, but as you heard Bellamy said, he's looking good, but still not 100% sure. Wishart moves to the bench, also very interesting, while Xavier Coates remains sidelined. Key stats, Panthers have won their past seven finals matches. Panthers have won four of their past five against the Storm. Bellamy will coach in his 50th finals game. Smithy, what do you reckon, mate? Mm. Yeah, well, big matchup, isn't it? Uh, as soon as Melbourne were beaten in that first week, they were on the collision course with Penrith um, in the prelim. And I think, um, yeah, it's it's a mouth-watering matchup, isn't it? Like, they've, they've been the most consistent or most dominant clubs over the last four or five seasons, Melbourne and um, Penrith. But, yeah, this... Uh, Heavy favourites, Penrith. Heavy favourites. And and understandably so, given the way they played week one of the finals. They finished minor premiers. Melbourne, you know, been a little bit sort of up and down throughout the season. But, you know, when you're talking, you know, calibre of players that Melbourne have, Hughes, Munster, Grant, Asofa Solomona, you know, these are guys that have played a lot of finals footy and they understand what it what it takes to win the big games. Will that be enough, though? Will that be enough? That's the question. Will that be enough against this footy side that have just they've they've made a living of winning these big games, and and they don't get overawed. They 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 don't get flustered. They don't panic. In the two matches that these two teams have met this year, Kempi, the Storm have been in front. They've led. They've led at a certain point in the game, but Penrith have just they've gone back to what works for them. They've fallen back on their game plan. They've, they haven't, as I, as I mentioned before, they haven't hit the panic button and then tried to do things outside of what they usually do on the footy field. They just stick to their guns, wear the opposition down. They come away with a win. That last time that they played each other in Melbourne, they played at Marvel Stadium. And the Storm, they, they jumped out of the blocks as fast as they've done all season. They got away... I think they were, they were leading, what was it, 12? No, I think, I think it was 14 points. They scored 14 points in the opening 15 minutes. And everyone at the ground was thinking, well, here we go. Like, this is going to be an upset. This is a big upset here. And, you know, has someone finally, they've cracked the code. They've cracked the code on, on how to beat Penrith. But, no, Penrith, and I must say, I've I got to mention, this was a, a Nathan cleary less Penrith side, he was out with that hamstring injury. So they they just Penrith went, no, 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 we won't panic. Let's just keep doing what we're doing, keep keep chipping away at the opposition, and they broke them. They come up with a a try um, just before half time, and the floodgates open. It ended up the final score. They end up putting like thirty odd points on the Storm. The Storm only managed to kick one penalty goal in the remaining sixty minutes of the game. And so Penrith ended up winning like in in dominant fashion. So um, the Storm certainly know how to score points against Penrith, and particularly early in the game. It's whether or not they they've found a way or come up with a way to maintain that lead and and finish Penrith off. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, the Penrith Panthers. What, what for one thing, people that just think it's a guarantee you know, mm. is ridiculous. This is finals mm. footy. Anything can happen. And also we're yeah. talking about a spine with Munster, Hughes and Grant in it. Yeah. Uh, plus a guy like Nelson or Sofa Solomona. Um, it, the tough thing is, is what is the game plan to beat the Penrith Panthers? Because mm. with the Melbourne Storm, you know, you'd have to look at both rosters right now and you'd say the Penrith Panthers roster right now is, is probably better. Yep. So, What's the game plan that can beat this suffocating, relentless Panthers kind of um, outfit that we have? And people try to go toe to toe with them in the grind. Doesn't usually work. But then some people, some teams try to go too far the opposite direction. They go, we're not even going to grind at all. Um, mm. And so I think the way the Melbourne Storm can, you know, really challenge the, uh, I guess, the Panthers is obviously fully committing to the grind. 
But also, yeah. when they do get in good ball, so let's say 40 metres in, that's when you take the risk. Take the risk in their end of the field. Now, not every mm-hmm. single set, but I think it needs to be a calculated game plan, of a calculated risk against the Penrith Panthers because you, you, you could beat them in a grind for sure, but you're playing the game the way they want to play it, whereas mm. you probably want to go there and play the game they don't want to play. Yeah. I think, I think like, I'm not saying that Penrith are predictable, right? But everyone's aware of the style of play that they have, the, the type of game plan. They are, they are machine-like, right? They, they are very um, organized and methodic in which the way they play. Uh, I've said this uh, you know, a thousand times. They're very different to the, the Panthers side that, that started to dominate in 2020 where they were, they were putting 30 and 40 points on in the first half of a game and just absolutely taking the game away from opposition teams. What they do now is they're happy just to make their tackles, um, you know, turn the ball over, get the ball, you know, work the ball up to halfway and then Cleary kicks it long. They get a good kick chase. They'll just and they just put that in repeat. They just put that in repeat, repeat, repeat until you until you, as in the opposition team, get bored. Mm. Okay? And then you try and come up with some fancy pass or some some play that's not in your game plan to try and break their defense or come up with points, you know, a cheap way, rather than working hard and getting yourself in good position to, to have a crack at them. So what, that's all they do. They just wait. They'll, they're happy to wait. They're happy to wait 20 minutes. They're happy to wait 30 minutes. They'll wait till the second half if they have to for you to come up with a mistake, an errant pass, a silly offload, and then they've got you. Mm. Then they've got you. Then they go to work. That's when Cleary goes to work. Um, that's when um, you know, Isaiah Yo goes to work. Dylan Edwards chimes in, and they start to break you down. They start to break you down. Then all of a sudden... It's it's gone from well we're in this game to oh hang on a minute it's six nil or it's twelve nil or it's eighteen nil and then all of a sudden you're thinking to yourself well how can we peg it's not like you give up but you're just like well this is this is too hard today mm. we're not going to get them I think if you look back to the way um, was it Parramatta Parramatta took them on defensively you got to be physical. Yeah. You have to be more aggressive than what they are. Now that's that's a difficult task in its, in itself when you got guys like Fisher Harris and and Moses Leota running back at you. Um, you know that's just a couple of guys. Plus, you know Brian Tottles running the ball back hard. You got yeah. Isaac Tongo back in the side as well, one of the more damaging um, runners of the ball playing in the centres this in this competition. But you got to be physical. You got to be willing to put yourself, put your body on the line, and go out and. You know, try and disrupt their their attacking game plan. Um, and Kempi, you're exactly right. When you get yourself into positions where you can start to attack, and when you have those set start opportunities, you got to be willing, right, to take a little bit of risk. Whether that is through second phase play, you know, popping a late offload in a tackle, or you know, trying to you know have some variation of your plays on the outside. You got to make them. You got to make them make decisions that they don't want to make. Penrith, mm. and and you know the, especially that kind of offload, because you know you can train for offloads, you know a bit, and it's really just about staying up in the line, um, you know, staying, keeping your feet moving. But at the end of the day, it's so kind of ad lib. That's why Panthers do struggle with the offloads because they're so heavily, you know, system orientated. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, from a Melbourne's perspective, I, I think that that's really the only way you can do it is, is entering the grind, trying mm-hmm. to be perfect, as perfect as you can be, you know, 95% completion or whatever, and then yeah. taking a calculated um, risk. We've got a quick text here. Just wondering why you think Wishart to the bench is interesting, Kempi. I think it's interesting because um, Garlic has been the 14 for pretty much the, the end of the year. And mm-hmm. I think it shows that they're probably not only did Wishart play well last week and earned that spot, but also I think mm-hmm. that shows that maybe with Hughes there, okay, if Hughes can't make it through the game, we've got a guy that can definitely fill that role if need be. Is that what do you reckon about that, Smithy? Yep, no, that's that you're right on you're on the money there, Kempi. Um so he's he would be he'd be the backup for Jerome Hughes. You know, if we just spoke with Craig Bellamy at the start of the show and he said, look, He's progressing nicely. Everything's okay at the moment, but we're just still unsure. It's just, 
it's a risk, right? Mm. It's a risk putting him in this weekend with a calf injury that he's been battling for the last sort of three, three or four weeks. It could go. Yep. Like, it could go, but it's the risk that they need to take by putting their their their, their number one well, their best number seven in for this game. It's a, it's a do-or-die game. He has to be there to play. If he's 80% fit, I believe he's got to be there. But that calf could go at any stage. So Wishart being there, that covers Hughes, but it also covers Harry Grant. Tyron yeah. Wishart's been playing in the dummy half role in the Queensland Cup for you know the most part of the year. He's been playing for the Sunshine Coast Falcons. And I remember... I, I, um, watching the result in a game that they played against the Redcliffe Dolphins, he he tore them to shreds, mm. Tyron Wishart, from dummy half. So it's, you know, he's a guy that has the ability to play multiple positions. He's got that versatility. And as I mentioned earlier as well, that's 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 one thing about a player's ability that Craig Bellamy loves is having someone with the versatility on the bench that can play multiple positions. You could chuck him out in the outside backs if you wanted to, mm. Tyron Wishart. So I think that's why he takes that role. The one selection I'm really curious about, Kempe, um, and I'd love to hear your views on it, uh, Jerome Luai. Yeah. Oh. Coming back from that, that shoulder. Mate, if he gets through this 80 minutes of footy, the Penrith Panthers medical team need a bloody double their salaries. <laughs> It'll be nothing short of incredible. And that's, that's yeah. not me. No, you're right. That's not me hoping he doesn't. That, that's me going... You know, there's there's kind of two dislocations dislocations you can have with your shoulder. You can sublux it. So basically, what mm-hmm. it does is it pops out, pops back in. Super mm-hmm. painful, and you're most likely going to need a shoulder reconstruction uh, at the end of the year. Look, probably honestly, 95 percent of players have dealt with that at some stage. Um, mm-hmm. Then there is the full dislocation that you can't get back in. Now that's usually more damage to the shoulder, and that's what Luai had. And like so. Well, basically what's happening in, with Luai's shoulder and guys like obviously go to NRL Physio, at NRL Physio, he's much better than me. But mm-hmm. the muscles around the ball that connects your shoulder to, you know, your collarbone or whatever, um, that would be all ripped and loosened. And yep. three weeks to repair them, it, it's a very short time. So if he gets hit hard on that shoulder, the muscles won't be mended enough for it not to pop out again. So that's why I say it would be very surprising if it doesn't, pop out again and I think it will be a game plan uh, actually I'll, I'll tell you a quick little story so I broke um, six ribs my lung collapsed and like mm-hmm. an absolute idiot fringy player that was trying to make the side I came back in three weeks against the Newcastle Knights <laughs> I got pain killing injections to get on the field played 70 minutes um, and in the 70th minute got an inside ball from Lockyer but the whole time every time I got tackled they were saying hit his ribs hit his ribs Yep. And eventually in that 70th minute, I think it's Steve Stimson, his name was, inside ball, yep. absolutely cleaned me up, boom, in the ribs again, out for a long period of time. And so we don't like to talk about it. We like to pretend like rugby league is in a tough game, but he mm. will be targeted if he does play by the Melbourne Storm. Absolutely. There, there's no doubt that that's been it, – it would have already been spoken about um, within the, the Storm preparation that, you know, if Luai plays, then he's going to – be targeted. There's no doubt about that. He's going to have numbers sent at him. And, you know, when you've got guys like Nelson, Asofa, Solomona, and Tui Kamika Mitha out there, big, big bodies, big men, carry the ball strong, it's high impact. Mm. And there is absolutely nowhere to hide, particularly when you're defending on the front line. Yeah. You just cannot hide. You've got to get your body in front and make those tackles. Now, Luai, is a, he's, a, he's a brave player. We've seen him play in big games, grand finals, state of origins, test matches, the whole lot. He's a brave player. But, at the end of the day, it's it's really how his shoulder, where's his shoulder at right now? That's that's the question mark. Is it can it hold up in such a high intensity game? Um, look, if he gets back and plays well, it's it's remarkable. Yeah. It's incredible. It's only three weeks ago he oh. he dislocated that shoulder and it's a it's a serious injury. There's no doubt about that. Um, but yeah, and, and it, again, can be. I think that's why Cog is on the bench, right? Yeah, that's why he'd be he'd be on the fourteen just in case. Something is to go wrong at any stage during the game. He can f- slot straight back into that number six spot. Mm. It's it's it's. If you ever need an example of why it's so important, some of your fringe first graders get game time. Look at the Pen- Panthers right now. You know, yeah. let's let's say Cogger had no game time this year. Imagine the pressure that he'd be dealing with right now. Whereas because he's played a fair bit of footy, he's got some runs under his belt. He'll just slot straight in. Okay, if that's that is if Luai doesn't. Um, you know, 
And that, that could honestly, that's a make or break final series. If you put a rookie in that hasn't had any game time during the year, mm. it could break your whole final series in a key position. Um, for the Penrith Panthers, like, you know, there isn't much to say because we know how they're going to play. We know how good they are. They're one of the greatest sides we've seen in the modern era. I guess my, I guess, tip to them, if I was a coach, it would just be all about complacency and trusting our systems. What would it be for, mm. for you, Smithy? Yeah, I think, well, I don't think they, complacency is not something I think that they would have to deal with, to be honest. Like, just watching them play, you know, throughout the season, like, they could easily sort of think to themselves, oh, we'll just have this week off. We'll have this week off and, you know, we'll win next week and mm. we'll be up there, thereabouts at the end of the year. But they don't. Like, they they are on every week. No matter who's in the side, who's out of the side. We've seen that this year where they had key players injured, um, they rested players at times, but they still went out there and, and played, you know, really good football. The only game that uh, over the last couple of years where you think, oh, geez, that's not Penrith, was that loss that they had to Parramatta, where they just they actually they didn't play well. Mm. But from there, they've they have been extremely extremely good. So you know, I don't think that that's going to be an issue. I, to me, I just think that they they would have watched that game last week, Roosters v Storm. And I think they would have started their preparation early to look at you know the way the Roosters scored their points, and I think Nathan Cleary with Ivan Cleary um, and the rest of their coaching staff they'll be coming up with with ways to try and pick apart this Melbourne Storm side. Yeah, oh, when you look at the odds, it's it's honestly incredible to see you know especially we're talking about the um, you know the the Melbourne Storm, but the odds currently mm. are dollar nineteen. The Melbourne Storm That's, are four seventy five. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Wow. Uh, yep. The dominance the Panthers have shown to get those kind of odds. And, mate, I cannot wait for this game. I, I think that it's going to be just – look, mm. if there's any team in the competition that could do something special and defy expectation, it's the Melbourne Storm. You've been doing it for yep. so many years. What are, mate, what are your thoughts on um, – what are your thoughts of the game at being at a core? There's been a bit of chat about this. Yeah, lately. look, uh, I mean, I don't mind it. I, I think that it's a bigger stadium – I think that if you were to – look, I understand the benefit because you did finish first. Could you have it at your home ground? But I mm. think that that should only be for maybe the first two games of the, the yeah. series. Uh, sorry, yeah. the final series. I think if you do it for all three, it's like, mate, you, you... – I actually, if if I'm being honest, the way I look mm. at it, if I'm um, the Panthers, I want to play at a core because if I'm looking mm. to make the grand final, I get games at the stadium. So I'm comfortable yeah. there. Yeah. I just hope they get a big crowd. Might look a little bit funny, eh? Yeah. That's a ninety. That's a ninety thousand seat stadium. That's the only thing. If they get thirty thousand, it's going to look sort of yeah, a little bit funny. But look a bit I, weird. I actually thought that game would have gone to Combank. See, I didn't even think about that. Some of the other stadiums. I was just thinking about Penrith, which is only what twelve or thirteen thousand, yeah. twenty thousand. Mm. So you'd want to be at around a forty thousand stadium, I reckon. Yeah. Or that thirty-five, forty. Um. Anyway, we're going to head to a break. After the break. Uh, we're going to te- te- get to your text, but then also we're going to preview the massive clash, Broncos v. the Warriors. <sighs> 